Hello and thanks for tuning in. My name is Matteo and today I'm presenting you the work Interplay between Chaos and Stochasticity in Celestial Mechanics, which I've conducted with uh, Stefano and Mattia, both from uh, University of Pisa in Italy. So we jump on the definition of uh, uh, chaos. Chaos is sensitivity to initial conditions. Uh, given a dynamical system, we can measure this with some metric. Uh, there are a number of metrics doing this. Uh, in this work, we focus on the finite time Lyapunov exponent. Uh, as many indicators, uh, this is named after Alexander Lyapunov, a mathematician and physicist that worked a lot on the theory of stability in dynamical systems. Uh, the idea is fairly easy. So we start from a dynamical system uh, expressed in equation one. Then we look into the uh, evolution in time of the partials with respect to the initial condition. Uh, this object is a matrix in general because x is a vector and x0 is a vector. And the evolution depends on the Jacobian of the, of the flow, f. Uh, from this uh, matrix, we can compute the Cauchy-Green strain tensor, which is positive definite, this delta matrix. And we can analyze the spectrum of it, looking into its eigenvalues. And we can uh, define the finite time Lyapunov exponent as the normalized in some sense. So we use 1 over t, in which t is the integration time. And we use the logarithm because we expect uh, exponential growth. But nevertheless, we take the maximum eigenvalue of this uh, Cauchy-Green tensor and we obtain uh, a scalar. We can use this to analyze a number of dynamical systems. Here you can see the traditional standard map studied in many dynamical systems theory courses. Um, here the system is fairly easy. The only uh, fancy term is this epsilon times f, in which f is a periodic function. We did this for a simple uh, sine wave. And uh, you can see that uh, analyzing the chaos uh, uh, field leads to fairly complicated structures. There's a, there's a stable uh, region around the origin, but then there's this deformed ring around this, um, this region. And this is for a fixed uh, uh, value of epsilon. Then we ask ourselves, what happens if we uh, change epsilon? And you can see that uh, uh, we have this animation that shows how the, the chaos field changes as we increase the value of epsilon. Uh, the beginning, let me show you again the beginning, uh, you have this uh, pendulum-like structure, which is broken more and more, folded onto itself, uh, leading to this sea of chaos, basically. After a certain point, uh, everything is chaotic or yeah, high values of the chaos indicator. And this is it for the standard map. Then we, we jumped into uh, the Arnold uh, map, uh, which is kind of interesting. We didn't study for this one the, uh, the chaos indicator itself. But we wanted to show it, uh, of course, on a cat, uh, as uh, Arnold itself uh, uh, showed it on a picture of a cat. We used a, a more, uh, let's say, up-to-date cat. But nevertheless, you can see that here, here there's no chaos uh, map. It's just the evolution of the, of the dynamical system, which is a discrete map. But you can see that, like in the chaos uh, uh, field uh, as a function of the parameter, you can see that here there's this folding onto itself that eventually brings back uh, structure sometimes. And then th this is a particular case because this map iterated for a long enough time leads, and you can see it here, to reconstructing the original system. Uh, but nevertheless, there's this uh, characteristic of chaos that's both given in dynamical system itself and on the uh, representation in the space of chaos indicators, if you will, uh, that leads to this uh, folding onto itself, twisting maps, all these ideas of uh, fractals uh, appearing in a chaotic dynamical system, which was interesting to show for us. But yeah, going back to the FTLE field, we have the perturbed pendulum. And uh, you can see here there is this uh, uh, picture of uh, uh, the chaos indicator for the pendulum. We have position in the x-axis and velocity in the y-axis. And uh, we can, again, ask ourselves what happens both for different initial conditions and different value of parameters. First, we wanted to explore a bit more the domain. And so you see this, this of course, it's periodic in, uh, in the space in, in position. And you can see that from minus pi to pi and then to pi, we have this periodicity uh, along the x-axis. But in the y-axis, which is the velocity, uh, there are these three uh, different uh, uh, stable uh, points which then are surrounded by kind of uh, uh, a sea of uh, in-between motion, which is either uh, less stable than these fixed points around the, the origin, for example, zero, zero. 
um, but less chaotic than other regions like the, the yellow ones. Uh, again, we can see what happens changing the value of parameters. Parameters that can be in principle anything, for example, here is alpha, but also it can be t, so the value of uh, the integration time. You can see that this structure emerges out of um, increasing the, uh, the propagation time. Now we can ask ourselves what happens to trajectories. In fact, uh, we see here that we sample a region around a stable point, uh, and by stable we mean a low value of the chaos indicator, and you see that uh, there's a coherent structure emerging, so uh, the, the structure remains compact and it moves and evolves, but uh, uh, there's no deformation, at least not strong deformation. This is not true for a chaotic initial condition. You see what happens for the same dynamical system, same parameters, but different initial condition associated to a high cha uh, chaos indicator value. You see that, again, there's this folding repeated, repeated many times that leads to really complicated structures, even for simple systems. And this is it about the perturbed pendulum. Now, a different system, slightly more complicated, uh, you can see uh, that, uh, again, it's made of periodic waves. We um, expected uh, a fairly common structure in the common domain, which is between uh, uh, 0 and 2 in the x-axis, but we also investigated the behavior uh, in the parametric space for the case indicators in this different domain between 9.5 and 11.5 in the x-axis which leads to very interesting uh, shapes, structures. Uh, then we looked into the, the, the usual uh, domain between zero and one, you see in the x-axis. And again, the same behavior, uh, stable initial condition, coherence, unstable, highly chaotic. We have this region that it's associated to a, uh, a point in which half trajectories go to the left side and half to the right. And then there's this folding, and you see the structure becomes really complicated. While on the right, for the same integration time, the structures remain coherent. So now what we introduce in this work is actually a stochastic generalization of this indicator. Uh, so we won't go in detail here uh, about the definition of stochastic calculus, but uh, it's enough to say that the differential of the state, so the evolution of the state, is given by a deterministic component represented by f, and then a stochastic one, uh, which is em uh, encoded into the structure of the G matrix. And of course, also the, the, the statistics of the process multiplying G. But we won't, we won't go in detail now. Um, the generalization is given here. Uh, it's fairly easy because the differentiation is a linear operator, so we can simply uh, compute the differential of the partials. And we have that uh, the state transition matrix is actually a stochastic process, which is an interesting uh, uh, concept. But even more interesting is the fact that if we then compute this uh, finite time level exponent of this stochastic matrix, uh, what we have is uh, um, a value that leads to really noisy uh, fields. And uh, this rang, rang the bell to try to draw a connection between uh, the Cauchy-Green strain tensor and uh, random matrix theory. So uh, increasing uh, uh, for high values of noise, you can, it's difficult to see structures in these matrices, but nevertheless, it seems uh, one could be able to do that given the knowledge of the statistics that generated it. Uh, but we cannot say much about it. It's just a recommendation, let's say. Um, but yeah, uh, really interesting structures emerge. Uh, an example is given uh, here in this uh, slide. Uh, you can see, uh, let me show you, yes, this animation, uh, sorry, this plot. Uh, we have uh, um, a double well uh, potential, the Duffing oscillator, in which we introduce a state-depending um, stochastic perturbation. And you can see that uh, uh, now this, the, the, the dynamics is kind of like before, there's the stable coherent set, but because of the noisy stochastic perturbation, you see it's not really compact. There are points escaping. And uh, the situation is even more messy for the unstable point. And so you see that there's this diffusion that's both a consequence of the initial condition associated to a chaotic dynamics in a stochastic generalized sense, but also because of the stochasticity in the dynamics itself. 
so this is it. Uh, let me conclude saying that uh, uh, it was interesting to analyze uh, uh, chaotic beha behavior and stochastic perturbations together and to define a, uh, an object that quantifies that and also look at the interplay between these two phenomena. Um, we would like to uh, work more on the definition of symplectic schemes for the integration of stochastic systems to actually quantify the diffusion of uh, 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 first integrals associated to the deterministic case. And so, as I say in the second two points, the idea is to apply first this methodology to a celestial mechanics problem uh, in which we introduce stochastic perturbations to a well-known orbital mechanics problem. And then to generalize previous works on the quantification of chaos in a probabilistic setting um, using not only orthogonal polynomials but also kernel methods and neural networks. Thank you very much. Uh, I look forward to your questions uh, via email. Thank you very much.